Okay, we're here on the Canola School on realagriculture.com with Matt Stanford from the Canola Council. Matt, today we're going to be looking at uh, how to properly check for moisture in our canola field before we start to, uh, for those of us that have irrigation, um, you know, we sometimes get the opportunity to when we're going to irrigate when we don't. So today we're going to uh, go through the process of how we check for proper moisture. Thanks, Sean. Well, this is a good tool. This is our uh, soil auger that we've got here. Um, what you can do is uh, take a marker and mark six inch increments on here, and I haven't done that. But um, essentially what you do is you push firmly down and screw it into the ground until the open end bottoms out there and it's full of soil. And you pull it out and you can see that this is fairly dry here. Uh, if you were checking for moisture to irrigate, um, you'd want to be able to make a good mud ball. Uh, you want to be keeping your field at, at or near field capacity. So at that point, you'd be able to make a nice mud ball and, and a soil with a little bit of clay in it. You'd be able to you know, smush it like this between your thumb and forefinger and ribbon it out. And you'd be able to make a you know two to three inch ribbon potentially, depending on the clay content of your soil. But you can see this is quite crumbly. So if you did have the ability to irrigate with the pivot, um, I'd say probably turn this pivot on right away. You know, put it on half an inch to three quarters of an inch with your canola at this stage in its development, and uh, from there, every time you make a circle. Uh, bring out your soil auger and check it and you don't want to over irrigate so you start to get water puddling and essentially once you start getting that uh, soil where it's a slimy consistency and there's no oxygen in the soil and you start getting water sitting around that's where you're going to want to shut it off but you want to keep it as close to field capacity as you can. Okay so now see we've got our wheels going here and uh, once you be done with this set and you move the wheel, you want to take your auger and screw it in. See what you've got for soil moisture. Well, see, you just started this set here, so it's a little bit uh, on the drier side here as well, but you can see that it is starting. It's on its way to be able to make a, a little bit better uh, mud ball than we could in that other spot in the field. Um, I guess with younger canola like this, with your wheel moves, you're probably going to want to try to avoid 12 hour sets. You're probably going to want to go more like an 8 hour set or if you're feeling ambitious, a 6 hour set. But um, this is starting to get to the point where you're going to be looking at your canola bolting soon. And so if it's quite dry, like it has been in a lot of areas, at that four to six leaf stage, if you go across it with an eight hour set with your wheels, um, that'd be a good strategy. And then once your canola starts to bolt, you've got about, you know, 10 days to two weeks sort of window uh, to get through your canola one more time with your wheels because once that canola starts to flower, you're not gonna be getting through it very easy. And depending on if you've got five or six foot wheels, it's going to sort of dictate what sort of a window you've got to work with to get through it. If you've got uh, pivot irrigation, then you've got lots more options. And actually one theory that I've heard is to, uh, you know, during, during establishment and up to the four or six leaf stage and into early cabbaging here, um, keep it nice and moist and top up the top couple of feet of the soil profile with good moisture and then once you start getting the bolting happening actually shut your pivot off and let the roots set down a little bit deeper to get to the deeper nutrients and moisture and then once you start seeing your first flowers opening then you can go and start your pivot up again but um, there's also a theory that you know the rooting depth of canola is almost strictly genetic and so there isn't going to be a difference in rooting depth no matter how you really manage your irrigation so there's those two kind of uh, differing points of view and I guess any way you can get your roots to set a little bit deeper than they otherwise would I think would be a benefit so it's worth trying it out and seeing what works in your own operation um, 
know, pull out plants, do moisture tests, check out what's going on, and keep good records, and then that way you can decide what works best for you and your farm. Okay, thanks, man. Exactly.